Hi there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Yeah, I'm standing in front of my old Impala. This is a 2011 Impala with a 3.5 liter V6. Been a great car, it's got 157 so thousand miles on it. About 32, 33 ish thousand miles ago, I did some work on the transmission. Still performing flawlessly, by the way. You might have seen that video recently as well. I've got another issue that's cropped up. And I did some research, and this is a common problem, probably with a lot of GM, maybe other cars as well. I just followed, looked at the GM stuff. And if you've got your stability track, Bing, 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 traction control. Bing, 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 ABS. Bing, 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 service stability track soon. Coming up on your dash. And it does it occasionally and then starts to get a little worse. I'm going to clue you in as to what it might be. And I'm going to get after it on my vehicle today and see if I can get it fixed because it went from when I left home, do it once or twice, then it wouldn't do it the rest of the day to it's doing it every few seconds, driving me batty. And that went, that was almost overnight. So what happens in these wheels, in these, the traction sensor, traction, no, not traction sensor, speed sensor. That's in your bearing, that's on the shaft, somewhere in there picking up the information and telling the computer that your tires are turning okay. The wire breaks or the wire starts to get weak and break some strands. Maybe there's only one or two strands not getting a strong signal. Well, lo and behold, I had two years ago or 30-ish thousand miles ago, uh, mice had chewed through both sides. They just went ham on my car. They chewed up my back wiring harness. Mice! Arr! You know, I would put a pallet load of mice and rat and whatever poison out here on my property if I didn't have cats and dogs and other pets that are in the area that it wouldn't do harm to. So I'm stuck with trying to come up with just mouse traps. I got some yard cats that do a pretty good job. I probably need about five more uh, farm cats. Uh, problem with farm cats is I live near other houses and people see cats and they go, oh, I've got a, I see a kitty. It must be hungry. It must need some water. It don't. I feed them. Because a fed cat is a better hunter. A cats, cats are sadistic animals sometimes. They will, they will bat around a little varmint until they kill it. They will torture it and play with it until they kill it. That's just in their nature. Now you cat lovers out there, not trying to offend you. I like my cats. I like what they do for me. I just need a few more of them. But a fed cat hunts for sport and not for food and will hunt more often. Now you guys disagree, comment down below. Tell me what your thoughts are about cats. Be kind, also like and subscribe. But anyway, I wish I had some more uh, cats here, but the neighbors will feed them and then they'll go, oh, then they'll turn it into the, the pound and go, this is a lost cat. No, this is a farm cat that just wandered onto your property. Leave it alone, don't feed it, don't pet it, don't do anything, it'll come back to me. It will come back because I feed them some good food. They got plenty of water. They got, gets lots of petting and loving from my wife because most of the cats, when I go to pick them up, they don't like me for some reason, but they love her. So I, God bless, let her love the cats. Let the cats love killing the mice. Let's get the front wheels off this thing and see if we can find anything. Yep. Let's get this up in the air. So we can pull a wheel off and see what's going on.
now that we have the wheel off and the car properly supported we can go in there and start looking at some wiring now I've got this thing I call it a wonder bar it's a pry bar it's gonna be handy for doing some of the stuff I'm getting ready to do first thing I'm gonna do here is unplug the sensor now right here is hard to see but right here where it plugs in there's a nice hard loop here that goes around on top of your AR lower control arm and goes all the way up into your wiring harness at some point well where this bend is is probably where most likely the problem will be because this is the area also that your car when it, when you're steering it bends it back and forth back and forth so it gets a lot of gets a pretty good workout So what I'm doing now is I've got the little pry bar in here and I'm trying to get all these where it hooks to the frame I'm taking all these loose so I can pull the wire out in front of me here and get a nice close look at it chances are back here where it's all tied down is not a problem Now that I've got the wiring harness all out in front of me, this is the area I was talking about. This is where it sits at a nice bend. And as you steer, this thing is doing this and this over and over. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut all these zip ties off and all these mounting little, I got more of these off. And we're going to take a, and look it over and see if we can find where there's a broken wire or where it feels broken. Now that's when I repaired. I remember repairing it, but I didn't remember how much repair I'd done. Looks like I have several heat shrinks through here um, where this was spliced back together after the mice chewed it up. I think they make these sections of uh, sensor wire plug-ins. I think I might just see if I can buy this with a pigtail so I can make one splice, lock it down so no movement happens and start off with a fresh piece of wire. And that way I will not have to worry about it for another Let's just call it 157,000 miles or, or mice. Well, I got some good news, folks. You know, I soldered this thing together once. Had a real nice fixed joint on it, but uh, I'm going to test this chunk of wire, but I'm pretty sure one of the two of them are bad. Part, part number, this is a Dorman part number. 970-040 fits the left or right side you can buy a pigtail that's this long it's got all the little clippies for clipping it down in your frame brand new piece of wire OE wire colors for the ABS harness may vary by model. If the vehicle wire color is different from harness, then connect green to yellow and tan to blue. I have blue and yellow on here. So I'm excited I was able to pick these up. These were a little, you know, a little under 50 bucks. 45, 47, 48 bucks, something like that each. So $100 to do both sides roughly by the time it's all said and done. And, uh, but we'll have brand new wiring, hopefully good for another 150 some thousand miles. So we're going to get busy soldering this in and plug it in and see if all my ding dang gling gling is gone off the dashboard. That would be ideal. All right, I'm trying to get you guys a decent vantage point. I'm going to actually do this the way the package suggests to do. I'm going to follow the rules. And by me at that, I mean it comes with two crimp connections. That actually have heat shrink type uh, material on it, which actually are very nice connections. And sometimes a good crimp can be better than a solder. 
and I'm, I'm you guys comment down below but uh, I have heard through the grapevine that sometimes a solder connection can be worse than a crimp connection because the solder can offer some resistance and I'm saying that as a form of a question can it so this one has now I left I didn't cut this all the way off as short as I could I'm leaving myself some wire there and I'm just gonna loop it back underneath here whatever I don't use it'll be out of the way but yeah we got the the blue and yellow match the blue and yellow and then what the cable coming off this other stuff is actually heavier duty than what's on the car oh I do like what I'm seeing here this stuff is 10 coated and what good 10 coating does for you is it actually won't corrode I'm betting the car is just copper so the aftermarket stuff maybe better so we'll go ahead and get to get our crimp on here what I like about this heat shrink is it will allow it'll add strength to the wire and give it support Yeah, that's a good crimp. Let's go ahead and put the yellow on here. I'm looking forward to a nice, quiet, stability track, free noise out uh, drive here in a, sh in a little bit here. Because once these are back in place, I can put the tires back on and we're we're back in business. And I'm using a nice crimping tool that has a little detent thing. Puts a solid crimp on things. That ain't going nowhere. Famous last words, right? There we got it all crimped together. Now we'll get the old heat gun on it. I know this might be hard to see. And I do apologize. There's not much room for the camera and me. With that there, I still have some of the original wire covering. I'll put right back over it. We got her all done now I didn't show you how to test the wires to see if you can find the broken wire and you know if you got 157,000 miles on your car and you got a broken wire in that area that moves a lot you replace both of them you don't just fix the broken wire and the little and patch it back together all the wires fatigue you spend a hundred bucks 80 to 100 bucks if you go on eBay or Amazon you can get them for much less so follow the links below and i'll send you some links down there that'll take you to the part number you need for a 2011 impala now, part numbers may vary please check it out for your own car the cool part is you'll know what it's called and you'll be able to do a search find it order it and make your car happy i fired it up turn the steering wheel back and forth no abs no stability track no anything no ding ding dings or nothing she's fixed we're going to take her for a test drive and see how she works out. Okay, let's fire it up and see what we get. See that ABS light that was there? There's some traction control over there. I'll go out now. Perfect. I'll work the steering wheel back and forth. Nothing. Before this thing would be ding 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 and like crazy. So I think we got her fixed. Let's take her first. Let's take her for a little spin. And uh, once I get up to speed, I'll show you some more. 
Now normally yesterday when this thing, cause it got crazy, just going around turns. I'm just gonna drive around the little city here a little bit. And uh, she's quiet, quiet as a church mouse right now. Ooh, right into the sun we are. Uh oh, raccoon. There's a lot of raccoons around here this year. Make a left turn here. Boys, she's pretty much fixed. I'm probably gonna repeat myself on this one, but you know, like you saw, I just replaced the whole pigtail. I didn't try to find the broken wire, patch the broken wire, replaced the whole pigtail. And then where I made the connection at is up in a place that zips tied down and makes no movement. So I've got anything that makes any movement is all 100% fresh new wires. This is going to make the repair last much, much longer. I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. Looks like I'm taking lefts and right turns and silence is king now. My dash is problem free. But yeah, I had the ABS, traction control, and Stabilitrack. All that was coming on. And I would take off and you could hear the little rrrr, rrrr, rrrr underneath the uh, on the brake pedal like the because it thought it was losing traction because it didn't wasn't getting a signal or a bad signal bad information but i think we got her fixed all right well folks thanks for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something today i hope you can get your car to quit making all kinds of dashboard noises as well you know this is uh you, you take this to a place to get fixed they're going to charge you double for the parts and then they're going to charge you so Double for the parts would be about $200. I'm just saying, that's what it'll be. And usually, double the parts cost, and that's what you're going to have for labor. So let's just call it $400. $350 to $400. If any of you guys have ever had this fixed before, leave comments below as to what it costs you so others can see and see how much money they can save. Because you can literally go buy yourself. Hey, hey. Hey. You going in? Okay. You could literally go buy yourself a heat gun a crimping tool, a, and a utility knife to do some scanning, wire wire cutters and scanners, and then you can buy all that. You might have a hundred and a quarter into this, maybe 150. Still way cheaper, less than half of what it might cost you to take it in and have somebody do it. That's why I do the videos, so I can help you guys save money, keep your old vehicles on the road a little bit longer. This wire, patch job I did on here I ain't kidding you should go 100,000 miles the first one went over 100 why wouldn't this go over 100 and actually I think it's higher, higher quality wire they use in these it just feels just because of that um, tin coating it won't corrode won't rust won't do anything funky corrode copper don't rust it corrodes oxidizes so fun stuff get out there and have some fun folks this is Michael saying if it ain't broke fix it till it is and we'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And follow, follow the links.